Welcome everyone to Cinema Spotlight. Diving into Ava DuVernay's career, we will be talking about A Wrinkle in Time. A Wrinkle in Time is about Storm Reid, who plays Meg Murray, an intelligent young girl who is struggling with the loss of her father four years ago. Her grief gets the best of her, despite everyone and everything telling her that she's amazing. So, when Mrs. Watsit, a astral being unusually appears before Meg's family claiming that the studies that Meg's father was researching are in fact real, Meg embarks reluctantly on a journey with her younger brother Charles Wallace and friend Calvin to find her father. She is joined by three astral beings including Mrs. Watsit who all are unique in their own way and help Meg realize her potential and keep the dark forces, the it, and evil dark energy from engulfing them all. So we take a small break from standing up against social issues like the right to vote and racial injustices that have happened to this nation for over a, a century and a half to more light-hearted fantasy. With Ava's filmography, we're getting more and more complex and darker into matter, so it's nice to take a breather from those very real problems to seeing a fantastical look into diversity, empowerment, self-love, self-worth, love, all that stuff. This movie is gorgeous and not on some superficial level. It has a message and it wants to say so much more than what it's telling. Some of the characters are surprisingly a lot of fun to watch and they all look unique so when you think of a character you think about what they look like and what they brought. So when you think of Mrs. Watsit, you get her. The same with Mrs. Who and Mrs. Witch. You get who the characters are, and they're memorable, and so you can definitely appreciate them. So between the movie and how it looks and the decent amount of memorable characters, what else that can be said about this movie is really the message, apart from maybe an excellent score by Raman Didwadi, who's done great work in the past, especially Game of Thrones and various other projects, but this is what the real meat and potatoes is here. So much goes into the wonder and exploration of one's true self despite your doubt and conflicting emotions. Despite everyone around you telling you that you're wonderful, you're more than likely going to believe the ones who tell you the exact opposite. And I'm, I'm one that struggles with that every day. So it was nice, very nice to see a film tell you that you should embrace your faults and use them to your advantage, knowing that there are more qualities within you than the negative ones that you believe. And how each one of these characters talk to one another can get very real. Definitely liked that, especially in a sequence with Zach Galifianakis as the happy medium when he tells Meg that she is choosing not to believe in herself. Or when Mrs. Witch, Oprah Winfrey's character, talks to Meg about who she is and what it took to being her in this exact moment as a whole. It was really genuine stuff. But that leads me to some of the critiques of the film that can come off as... I didn't like it, but I feel like there were some glaring issues that had kept me from keeping my mind focused on what was given. Meg, who we are really focused on here as our lead protagonist, she's going through a lot at this current time. You know she wants to find her father, but before she knows that she can even do that, she doesn't really do much except mope around, sulk, get picked on, and deal with a couple of awkward situations that her brother Charles Wallace unfortunately stirs. Her self-doubt does slow things down a bit as she travels within the universe to find her father, but it's really the lessons she learns throughout this journey that I feel like you can get behind despite her self-doubt. Now, when I said that some of the characters are memorable, I meant that, but there are a few that really don't do anything in this journey. And that's kind of a shame, even though some of the characters say, oh, he's coming along because he's very good at doing this specific thing. And who I speak of is ultimately Kevin O'Keefe and his role in this story. Charles Wallace explains that Calvin is coming along because he's good at diplomacy. But throughout the film, he really doesn't do much of that. If anything, his character is really not all that explored, and he serves as an audience member to help us understand, as the real audience, what's going on. So whatever he's uncertain about or tempted to do, the characters around him warn or help him or stop him or help him understand. It's, it's not annoying, and he's not annoying as a character, but there's not much to him. And maybe... 
his role as this, you know, diplomatic character isn't exactly doing anything more than helping us as the audience figure out what's going on. Now, I hate to bring up Charles Wallace in this moment and segment, but and it may think make you think like, oh, he must have disliked this character, but honestly, <laughs> I really didn't. And not in the slightest. If anything, he's the best part of the movie. But much of his delivery of dialogue ranges from silly to offbeat, resulting in awkward situations that are intentional, but sometimes unintentional. He is portrayed as this smart, prodigious kid. In fact, he is. You know, he really carries himself like he is extremely smart. So you get that idea of him. But for many more reasons than one, everything can be justified on how he's delivering, what he's doing, and how he's doing it. And I understand that him being smart doesn't always go with the flow of things. But it just comes off weird to me. There's no other way I can really explain that. But Charles Wallace isn't the only one, which leads me to the moments where Ava as a director is just pitch perfect as the director of this film. But she only has hints of her style within this moment, or this movie, I should say. She loves making you feel like a fly on the wall, understanding and figuring out and seeing what's going on in her movies. But then there are moments where you're not a fly on the wall at all, and it kind of takes away that perspective. And that's what kind of made this whole thing unique to me. When she's not doing that, it takes you out. And the other thing that took me out was the dialogue. It's not as strong. And I know she had no part in that. I know that is not her doing. And the acting is phenomenal, and it's great. These actors and actresses really give it their all here, but honestly, I just have issues with how everyone speaks to one another when the fantasy elements kick in, even sometimes when they are even grounded in reality. When they are not talking in terms of the it, tessering, and other elements that make up the universe, things feel real and like there's a purpose. But then when they start speaking about things much bigger than themselves, or show off everyone's personalities, fantastical elements, it gets a little awkward. And I'm using that word a lot, just it's offbeat. And this could be for the reasons of, you know, my perspective to your perspective, which means you could completely and utterly enjoy the hell out of this and not even be bothered by how its delivery is executed. But to me, it took a couple of times for me to go, oh, focus, dog. Don't even worry about that. Just enjoy yourself. All in all, the visual spectacle is wonderful. Everyone looks like they're having a good time with the roles and message. And I really feel that message can reach its demographic that it's trying to reach, empowering young females and males to figure out who they are they're, if they're having an identity crisis or don't like the faults that they have. I do wish some of the characters were strengthened more, but the doubts that Meg carries are very real and appropriate for the story. It does slow things down a little bit, but I think you're still with her in the lessons that she needs to learn, which is really tough to do. I think this is a film with great concepts, great emotional moments, coupled with some awkward dialogue and not enough exploration to see the potential the film has to offer, but it does not dull down the message one bit and it's very insightful. For that, I liked Wrinkle in Time, but would not own. It's a film I actually would like to share with others and it's actually on Disney Plus, so it's definitely accessible for anyone who wants to watch it and i would love to just rewatch it with them because there's a rewatchability to it all all right thank you all so much for watching if you have seen a wrinkle in time let me know down in the comments be kind be reasonable and let's talk like share and subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out on another video with all that said i hope you all have a fantastic and wonderful day until next time